All right. Um, so I'll just uh, give a, a quick introduction to uh, our technology. So uh, this is a Unity game, and we're using wires, of course. Um, we uh, are using the plugin, but we modified it uh, quite a bit. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, we're using uh, Playmaker for some state machines. Uh, sometimes we wish we didn't because it doesn't perform that well, but, uh, but we uh, integrated it anyway. So, uh, go away. so the voice sequence that you just heard is a, a, a really simple sequence are implemented in, uh, in uh, just the Unity scripting using the callbacks from WISE. So um, it uh, stitches these uh, sound events together, uh, stitches in the sense that it tries to pl put them as close together as possible, but it's not uh, a zero sample stitching. Um, it works fine for, for these kinds of sounds. And uh, of course it's inhaling, exhaling, two inhales in a row would be weird. Um, which sound we're playing, uh, we had different situations before, we had like uh, crawling and, and pushing and all that, and we, we have an action that defines that, we have emotions for certain situations, um, and we have intensity, which is like the out of breathness or how um, emotional you feel about something. Uh, these are all values we can Modify while the game is running. Um, yes. So um, we have two basic modes. I will talk about both of them. Uh, the continuous mode is uh, the one you uh, heard when the boy is standing still or when he's doing most things other than running. When he's running, he does this rhythmic breathing thing that I'll uh, explain later. Uh, the continuous mode goes like this. We have a uh, switch we update for, like a uh, switch is a, a discrete wise variable, so you can set it to a set of values. So we have in inhale and exhale, so we just alternate between those. We have a um, we have switches for actions and emotions, and we have a so-called RTPC, which is a, a word for variable. Uh, that you just uh, like a number that you set for intensity. Then we uh, post an event and we specify that we want a callback when the event is finished. Uh, and when we get that, the sound has finished playing, so we are ready to play a new one. Uh, and we loop. So, uh, as Martin said, this uh, these recorded sounds now ki kind of define the rhythm of the breathing. They are uh, uneven and sound uh, natural and, uh, and good. Now, as we are getting these uh, callbacks, we might as well use them for other stuff as well. So we have this kind of additive breathing animation for the boy. Uh, so we use the callback and we uh, trigger those inhales and exhales uh, to affect his, his pose as well. If you look closely at him, you can, can see it. And e even in these uh, pictures, it's too subtle to see eff effectively. But it is there, I promise. So uh, we had to uh, take a special care of uh, jumping. Uh, we felt like you, are, uh, you, you hold your breath while you are uh, in the air in a drop jump. So if you were inhaling, then that was your last inhale before you land, and you'll just stop uh, the sequencer. If you are exhaling, you want to do a quick inhale, so you are kind of full of air for, uh, for when you land. Uh, so we do like a quick inhale and then uh, hold our breath. When we, um, when we land, we restart the breathing with the exhale that must take place at that point. And we have a special action for that, and if based on the impact, which is also just a value we send based on speed, uh, we have either a normal inhale or this kind of grunt when you land. <coughs> uh, 
And uh, as Martin demonstrated, we have these uh, different kinds of, we have the normal, normal actions, and then we have these engaged ones where you are grabbing hold of something, preparing to do physical work. And that's, that's passive engagement, and we have active engagement when you are actually doing work, like you're pushing a box. And now Martin will show some wise stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll basically show how the, um, the things are set up in, uh, in wires. If I get, can get the wire out here. It's just a mess. <laughs> so I think unlike uh, many other uh, areas of the, the project, the breathing is actually based on one uh, event that's just called boy book, like the boy vocal, and it's uh, on the very top of this uh, uh, switch hierarchy here. But uh, if you look from the very uh, top, just to see what kind of things applies to the boy, then we have like yeah, basic panning here. Um, there's not much to look in there, I'll just give it a bit more space. Um, and we're doing 2D, so we don't have any uh, front left. The, st uh, the game is actually mixed in the uh, old-fashioned stereo. Um, and on the vocal, we have different things. Um, of course, distance to uh, the camera. Uh, but also, this one is a bit more interesting. It's actually um, the angle of the boy's head. So if he's... Um, looking into the camera is actually uh, a lot louder than if he is looking into the image and this one actually represents the the reverb that we are using so when he breathes into the away from from us uh, the reverb uh, goes up um, we also have a uh, uh, voice config volume and that's one i can s uh, control via triggers in the game and uh, state machines and there's also a side chain, which I'll show later on. Um, so at the very top, uh, we have, um, if I just uh, reset everything, um, you can see the different actions here. Um, so that's the, the first level. It's the actions. That's the die, emotion, engaged, active, and passive. Uh, jump, land, land grab, and step. So those are the different uh, um, actions that we can switch between. And I can switch them here. So if you take the step, we'll go down and uh, explore the step. Um, often when I uh, name the switches, I get a bit confused about you know what's, what's uh, the switch itself and what does it contain. So you can see here, I call it, uh, the last word is action, and then the next to last word in the um, container uh, below it is step, which is the action. And then uh, what it contains is the theme. And then we have two different themes down here, which is basically normal and sneak, and it's because it's uh, pretty much a kind of a stealth game. So there's a lot of times where you have to hide, and that's something that I always... Um, ignore me when I'm playing a, a stealth game and the character says <gasps> when he jumps, uh, stuff like that. So the character really is in s kind of a stealth mode, both with his vocal and also with his uh, foley. Uh, so if we go a step further down here, we'll see we have different emotions. So death panic, that's usually if he gets chased by a dog or something and the dog is like one meter from him, he will be like totally desperate. I'll also show you an example later on uh, where you can hear that. So that only happens like very short, like either he survives or he, he dies. And we have alert if he and we have uh, determined, like if he feels like confident, he will breathe like confidently through his nose. We have frantic and uh, relaxed, relieved, like if he uh, uh, passes a puzzle uh, survives and he will have kind of a relieved breathing. And that's also one when he gets strangled. Uh, if you just look into the normal relaxed one, 
uh, you can see the next step we have is the cycle. So that actually lies in the bottom of the whole hierarchy, whether he's uh, inhaling or exhaling. But from the top here, I should be able to uh, choose the different um, uh, emotions here. And um, actually, the um, intensity, and you can see I'm using the musical terms, uh, dynamic, like for the metaphor, the metaphor, and I'll do that for all sounds, also physics sounds, because like 1 to 10, I want to find what does it mean. But when I hear something, I can always tell whether it's piano or metaphor. So I, I always use that for reference. Um, we could um, look into uh, a few other, like jumping. I think that one is uh, interesting because um, Usually, a lot of time the, the jump sound is, is the same no matter how exhausted you are. But but this one uh, kind of uh, relates to the intensity. So if you're standing still and jumping, he will just make a, make a small like like almost nothing. But if he's uh, exhausted, then he will um, make a, a louder one. And many of the sounds are split into two, so you can hear the the breathing and then there's a small like throat click. Okay, so that's the jump sound. And then we have like different uh, for different length sounds obviously. <coughs> like that. And I call this one bypass because again if he, he's just like jumping like this he shouldn't make a noise like that. But still it's what the game triggers so it actually just plays a regular hierarchy here and um, if he um, lands by gra grabbing a ledge then it's more like a, a strange <coughs> sound um, I think I'll just uh, wrap this uh, yeah, one thing I should notice is that um, as you notice, um, I should mention, um, most of them are, are switches. There's a few switches that are, aren't exposed here, and that's because they're based on RTPC, as uh, Jakob mentions, mentioned before. Uh, so one of those is, um, is the, um, I can look at here, is the, yeah, the intensity. Over here. So that's a switch, and um, it basically maps the parameter into uh, different uh, switch levels. So 0 to 25 is piano and so on. Um, yeah, I'll just play um, a final example of uh, the voice. I just wanted to uh, connect to the game and then so you can see the, uh, the intensity level. Just look for the boy here. And now we can see his uh, intensity here. Yep. Uh. 
til der er sådan en... Øh, den, den, inter, den der står inter, ja. Den der. And you can see the intensity level only changes every time he uh, takes a breath, and I think that's uh, performance uh, related. As you heard before, he will only make like a, a quick inhalation if he's uh, exhaling while he's uh, before he's jumping. to relax. What you should also know, which is what Jacob is going to talk about now, is uh, when he starts to run, he will align his uh, breathing, the rhythm of his breathing with uh, the footsteps, with the sound of the footsteps. Just to answer the boy. Um, Now we will hear his uh, frantic breathing. <laughs> Getting strangled. to follow up on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, rhythmic breathing is uh, what we heard when he was running. So we, was, uh, we wanted him to breathe on every other step. I uh, ran a few rounds around the office to ensure to myself that that was also a thing that I did, which Kind of worked, got out of breath really quickly, but I'm a programmer, so it's fine. <laughs> so um, we wanted it to uh, align with the footsteps, and we are switching from this continuous sequencing, where we are trying to stitch the sounds together, to spacing them out, because that's how it turned out, that you had uh, more space between the sounds when you were kind of matching it to your uh, feet. So, uh, yes, one breath for every two steps uh, was the goal. So, uh, it, the basic thing is trivial to just look for an animation event and then play a, play a breath sound at that point. But the tricky thing was the transition between... Uh, we w didn't want it to switch uh, immediately because that would sound very forced. Uh, so, we wanted a gradual transition from the continuous sequencing. So, uh, how to do that? Well, um, I kind of uh, saw it as a, uh, uh, a frequency phase type of problem. So, the run cycle has uh, I d defined phase to be uh, the full run cycle is runs from zero to one and uh, every step is uh, half of of the phase, so it just resets when you when you have step number two. 
uh, wrap that around. Looks like this. Nothing new here. Um, the breathing was half the frequency of the run speed, so we just have one breath in a full cycle. But it's supposed to go around at the same uh, speed as the the uh, other one. So um, for the continuous breathing, we can kind of uh, get a phase and a frequency based on, as, as long as we have an inhale and an exhale, we can say, okay, what's the distance between those? That gives us the frequency. And how is that aligned in relation to the footsteps, which are fairly even uh, beats? So you have these kind of phases that are displaced uh, in relation to each other. So we have these two spinning things, and uh, we want one to gradually align with the other. Uh, and in general, we wanted to align frequency and phase for uh, one, one set of those with another set of, of those. And uh, uh, who knows about aligning two spinning things? Well, the DJs do. Uh, especially this guy. Um, so uh, then the idea was to um, use like what would be the pitch adjust on a, a turntable. You could say, okay, this is slower than this beat is slower than this beat, so I'll just adjust the pitch. But then this is offset, so this is behind, so I over adjust, I overcompensate for the phase being off, and then they will align and if you keep doing that slowly you will match them up over time and it sounds very natural. So we end up with something that looks like this. Uh, it's, uh, it's like uh, the other continuous sequencing but we kind of analyze the rhythm, get a frequency and a fa phase, we beat match the breathing based on what rhythm the breathing already had to that and uh, update phase from frequency and then we breathe when phase is zero. And it worked, fortunately. So uh, now we, we kind of trigger the sounds at the right moment, but we, uh, now we just have a general boy sequencer, voice sequencer that we can use, but we need to kind of instruct the boy on how he should sound uh, in the different parts of the game. So I call that voice direction. Sounds like something uh, you would do in a theater or in a movie. And um, uh, Martin would be the director and the actor is this sequencer. And uh, uh, he tells him how to behave based on either location or when something happens. So if he can get scared, he'll quickly react by being sounding scared. Uh, we have a few uh, mechanisms for that. We have uh, basic triggers you can put into a scene. We have the uh, state machines, so we have the playmaker machines and you can have an action where you can define uh, voice configuration. We can do it from scripts and we can control the parameters we talked about before. Trigger box would look like this. Now, obviously, the game you uh, see is a 3D environment, but the gameplay is 2D, so just place it uh, in the set equals zero plane, and you should be fine. So we can kind of select which uh, things we want to change. So we have you can set an emotion if you want, or you can not do it, and it'll just keep whatever it has. You can set intensity and you can set a different action so you can make a, a, a sound that sounds like he's landing even though he's playing a custom animation where it's not defined as landing. And this is the same thing without the fancy colors but it's the same uh, controls but in a state machine so when we reach a certain point in the game we can define the same settings. Now, uh, intensity is uh, one that is uh, it's a very expressive tool throughout the game. 
uh, and uh, Martin showed it before. Uh, so his movement is generating exhaustion. So, like, step one is how quickly is he running? Then he gains it faster, and uh, etc. So, uh, voice intensity is just like a filtered version of that. So we get a smooth version of how much uh, energy he's using at a time. And we use that to select the, the sounds, as Martin showed. And uh, depension, depending on the emotions we have selected, it can either just be how exhausted is he, but it could also mean that he's a little bit scared or very scared, for example. So uh, controlling that, uh, the game just provides the basic curves based on his movement, so if you want to control it in the scene, we have to clamp that value to something. So we have this control where we can say, okay, we want it to be between 50 and 75, which in Martin terms would be metaphorical to, or metaphorical mm. to metaphorical maybe. Yeah. Uh, and um, just uh, uh, clamp the, the, uh, the intensity based on that. Uh, we can also do it, uh, we can interpolate those values in space, so if you uh, have an area that gets uh, scarier, the more you go towards the right, you will uh, kind of uh, go towards the, the maximum intensity. So th this is super scary to, towards the right, but it's, he's trying to be quiet along the left, so uh, we can kind of morph those values. Um, we can do the same thing, but over time, so if we just want him to be super scared and then relax, uh, regardless of where he is in the scene, we set this uh, morph flag and we can say, okay, he, he starts out being clamped to being maximum intensity and it'll just uh, relax over five seconds and it'll get back to wherever he is physically at that, that point. Okay, so to summarize, we have one event and we have this hierarchy of switches that determines which sounds to actually play. We have a continuous sequencer that uses uh, uh, callbacks to keep going and we have rhythmic breathing that beat matches uh, the breathing to footsteps. We can specify this voice direction with uh, trigger boxes and state machines. We can control the intensity by clamping it and we can interpolate that clamping to define a, uh, something in time or over space. 